down anytime and get help. So today we are doing our new unit, The Outsiders. Raise your hand if you've heard of this, read it, saw the movie, anything, a few of you. Okay, good. Um, I'm excited for you guys to start it. I think that um, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have a lot of fun. The first thing we're going to do is I just want to go through some of the background information with you guys. Um, before we do that, I just want to remind you of a few literary terms that are vital to you guys um, being introduced to the outsiders. Um, who can remind me, what is a theme? It's like the main idea. It's like the main idea. Like the thing the author wants the person to get out of the story. Good. Liz? Um, it's not just like one word, like saying love. It's like love conquers all. Exactly. That's what we have to remember. So after um, the lesson today, after we do our activity, when I pull you together as a group, I want you guys to explain to me what you think the theme of the story may be. Okay? So, first of all, um, The Outsiders was written by S.E. Um, Hilton. The, about the author, Hinton, sorry, about the author a little bit. She started writing in the year 1963. She was only 15 years old when she started writing it. So you'll notice as we start to read, not only will you identify with the characters because they're about your age, but keep in mind that the author was about your age when she started writing the novel. And just a fun fact about her, she failed her writing class when she was in school. So sometimes um, you might get down on yourself, you might not get the best grade that you wanted to get, but does that mean that you don't really know what you're doing? No, you probably have the ability. So she didn't do well in her writing classes, and she wrote such a classic novel that we're still reading it today. The inspiration behind The Outsiders, um, in high school, the author was frustrated with the social divisions that she witnessed. What's a social divide? Jackie? Like a clique or Cliques or groups, we've seen this. We've watched um, clips from movies like, um, what's the bullying clips that we've watched? <laughs> from Mean Girls, right. So that, that would be a social divide. So in high school, she saw all of these social divides. She didn't like that everyone divided themselves into cliques. She wasn't fond of that. You know, there was the jocks, there was the nerds, there was this type of group, that type of group. Some were the insiders, some were the outcasts, and she didn't like it. She was frustrated with fiction available for high school students only. And she felt like it was all very unrealistic, so she wanted to make change. Um, since she was so young when she started reading the book, I feel like you guys will be able to relate on multiple levels. And some say that the story was actually based on something that really happened to her. Um, she witnessed a fight and one of her friends was jumped. And she was so upset and angry that she went home and began writing the novel. Just a quick plot overview. The Outsiders tells the story of class conflict. There's two different groups we're going to be reading about. They um, have two different clip cliques that they go with. Uh, that it's, it's a level of class too. So you'll see one group doesn't come from money, one group does. You'll see um, one group have certain symbols that we'll get into later on um, that promote a certain social status and the other group doesn't have that. What kind of problems could arise from these types of things? Or even experiences you've had or you've witnessed? Fear? Jealousy. Jealousy? Okay. So we had someone say jealousy. A lot of prejudice and thinking that you're about other people like this. Good. Prejudices. Michael? Um, different opinions. So there's, it seems like there's going to be like a lot of fights. Okay, a lot of fights. Like a social ladder? There is, for sure, Jackie. A lot of discrimination. Discrimination. So, um, we have privileged kids, or the wealthy, they live on the west side of town. And then we see our narrator, Pony Boy Curtis. And he, um, he comes up, he grows up around a lot of conflict, a lot of violence. Some of his best friends, um, he's witnessed death within his family and his friends. And we see... Um, this whole backdrop becoming who he is. What does a coming of age novel mean? Well, if I say you, you'll witness Pony Boy come of age, what does that mean? Liz? Um, through his experiences and 
says he matures as a person. Good. So who he is in the beginning of the story might be different from who he is at the end. And a prediction that I want to make before I ask you guys to make a prediction. Um, I have a prediction that some of the ideas and some of the thoughts that you go into with this book, you'll come out thinking differently. So it may be a coming of age for you guys as well. Um, it's like a Dynamic character. Awesome. Another literary term. What does a dynamic character mean? Remind us. Madeline? Oh, uh, like someone who changes throughout the story. Someone who changes over time. Before I read the hook for you guys, I just want to do a literary focus. The genre falls into adult fiction, okay? It's a little bit more mature than things that, than our, say, our hair-raising tale stories. The setting, the time is the mid-1960s. We're not going to go too deep into setting right now. I just want to do a brief overview, but we have an entire class planned to get into the 1960s genre and to even compare it to today. Um, the setting, the place, is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the tone, it's youthful, it's rebellious, it's simplistic, and it's melodramatic. What predictions do you have, just by looking up at this screen, about the story in general? Jack? Um, I think that the, um, that the narrator is like, um, yeah, You're not sure. Who can help him out? Any predictions you have? Any ideas? Go ahead, Ray. Well, and maybe, like, the main character is trying to find himself in, like, where in the school where everyone was, like, in groups, and there are people like, Good. The main character is trying to find himself. What else? Anything else? Saya? Uh, the main character is probably young. Uh, he might be a racer. That's true. All of those things are true. What could we have in common with, with the main character? He's a greaser. He's lower class. You'll find out in a little bit what a greaser means. He's in the 1960s and he's in Oklahoma. How can that compare to us here? Jackie? Because it doesn't really matter like, who he is and where he's from. Like, some you can relate to some of his emotions, or some of his experiences, or thoughts, or feelings. Nice. We can relate to him emotionally. Do you think things are really that different? Words like um, greasers may be different from today, but do you think there's still people who would fit into that clique today? Um, hangouts might be different. People who used to hang out at a gas station maybe will hang out now at a mall, but is it really that different? And that's something that we'll be reading about. Um, so for today, what I wanted to do was just give you a quick, brief overview of what to expect and kind of um, the setting, the time, the place. We'll get more in depth with that as we go later on through the, um, through the unit. So for today, I kind of wanted to do a hook activity. So what do we know a hook is? my papers. Michael? It draws the reader in. Drawing the reader in. So my job for you today is to draw you guys in to want to read this novel, right? So you guys all did a hook for me on your um, on your unit essays. So you all had to draw me into reading your paper, so then I have to draw you in to read the book. So for example, what kind of, when I was deciding to do the hook with you guys, what kind of section in the book was I looking for? Relate it back to your papers, what you just learned about hooks. What kind of section in the book would I look for if I wanted to come up with a hook for you guys? Is that it? Um, an intense scene which you don't really know about, but it's kind of like interesting. Nice. Something that's interesting might be an intense scene. So here's the activity for today. First, I'm going to read a hook for you guys. We're just going to leave it at that. We're not going to discuss it. When I'm done reading the hook, I want everyone to stand up, push in your chairs, and then come meet me at the front of the room. Just try to stand in like a neat straight across line as much as possible, okay? And then, once you're up here, I'm going to read statements for you. I'm going to read um, between 10 and 15 statements. They're controversial statements. They all are drawn out of the themes from the book. When I read you that statement, you'll notice in the four corners of the room, there's these little signs. Look above Jackie's head. That one says, strongly agree. Look above Camille's head. There's a sign that says, does that one say agree? Yeah. Agree. Look above Michael's head in the back over here. What does that say? Disagree. 
And then above TJ's head over here. Strongly disagree. So we have strongly agree, strongly disagree, disagree, and agree. So this is the agreeing side of the room, the disagreeing side of the room. Um, if you feel like, eh, I kind of agree, just go to agree. But if you're completely against it, you would be strongly disagree. Does everyone kind of get that? So when I read you the controversial statement, there's no talking, don't even discuss it, just go to where you feel like you fit in, and then once you're there, we'll have an opportunity to discuss. So there's no talking until we get to our stations, and then we'll talk as a group about why we're there and what we think about it. And then my prediction for you guys is some of you who maybe are standing at strongly disagree at the beginning of the book, by the time you guys get to the end of the book, you may even be on the side of agree. All right? So, 